I'm really excited to talk about what we've been doing at AFM. Um, but before I do, I want to get you guys to go back a little bit. Maybe go back to yesterday, maybe this past weekend, when you were grocery shopping. Right? You get to the parking lot, look around. You go through the lobby, look around. You go through center aisle, center store. You go to the perimeter. You're on your way out. You go through the checkout aisle. And then you're back at your car. And what do you see the entire way? Whether it's on the floor, floor talkers, shelf talkers, things coming from the ceiling, standees, bins, all kinds of things. Brands. Brands on brands on brands on brands on brands. And I'm not picking on the Frito people. I love the Frito people. If you think about it, they're everywhere. Um, we got a lot of branding all over the place in the store. But the proliferation of the brands is something that necessarily hasn't found its way to our space. Even water, right? The most abundant resource on the planet. I mean, they say money doesn't fall from trees, maybe, but free water falls from the sky. <laughs> Yet we found a way to brand it. It's crazy, right? But what's interesting is the thing we've been bartering probably since the beginning of man, produce, agriculture, fruits, vegetables, sequence is off Darren a little bit, huh? Um, the thing we've been doing here, guys, in this space has been the same thing we've been doing since the advent of supermarkets. No branding here. And as a former CPG guy, you know, I know, because I've been doing this for about 20 years now, I started at P&G when I was 22, and the story was the same back then. How do we get into the produce area? How do we get in there? So you're talking about a space that's been around forever, a space that's profitable that other you know, brands and organizations want to get into, yet where's the branding, right? And that's effectively what I'm going to talk to you about. How do you brand in a space that's brandless? You know, if you're starting a new brand, we see this all the time, whether it's in technology or in uh, consumer products, cons consumer uh, staples, discretionary, B2B, we see it all the time. The notion of creating a brand, there's one step you don't have to worry about. Getting consumers to think about branding in said category. Well, in our category, they don't, brands, what's that? And sure, you've got a couple out there that have done a few things. You know, shout out to Chiquita, for example, okay? But if you think about the main thing you've seen with Chiquita is that sticker, right? An advantage, frankly, that they've got that we don't. I can tell you about that over a drink. But that's what I'm gonna to talk to you guys about is, is our attempt uh, to make waves in doing this, doing something different that no one else is really doing in the produce space. Um, before I do that, it's worth explaining who we are so that you guys understand some of the things that uh, shape the decisions uh, that we make, okay? It's, it's a long story, y'all. Back in 2000, there were imports of avocados from Mexico to certain states. It's kind of on a state-by-state -state basis. Then in 2008, Congress and USDA allowed for the entire country to receive these imports. And these, these two entities, on the left and the right, Mejia and IPM, they were, they're kind of frenemies, right? They want the same thing. They want to sell as many avocados as they can. But this guy over here on the right is selling to this guy over here on the left. And then they go on and sell to the retailer. But the point is that they were doing marketing, or what they called marketing, separately. Well, they worked with the Congress, United States Congress in 2000, and also with USDA uh, to create an agreement, essentially, and a law. So there's a law and a regulation that allows for our organization to exist. So effectively, we have a board. That board is made up of growers, in Mexico, importers in the United States, 
and the United States Department of Agriculture from an oversight standpoint. And our sole purpose is to market the product coming from Mexico, and we have complete oversight from USDA, meaning all of my contracts have to be approved by them. Every single Super Bowl ad I have has to be approved by them. Every social post has to be approved by the United States Department of Agriculture. So you can imagine what my world is like. Yeah? I love those guys. So they work hard. They work hard, but it's, it's hard work. I even have for you guys a little bit of a screenshot of HR 2962. This is the law, okay? Um, uh, it's many more pages than this, but I circled there the assessment. So what, what happens is the growers pay, I'm sorry, the importers. This law says the importers will pay into a general fund for us two and a half cents per pound imported into the United States. And then what happens is the growers say, well, whatever that is, we'll add another third on top of it, and that'll be your budget. Okay, so we're a nonprofit organization, but not charity. We're not, non we're not a nonprofit C. But this is effectively what we're here to do. The structure of our organization is as such. We started this organization back in 2013-14, been there ever since. Uh, we're on our fourth or fifth uh, office expansion because all of these existed. Well, actually, HR didn't exist, but what you have in terms of boxes underneath now have people that help us run these things. Back then, it was one person per circle. I was the guy on the far left. Uh, so we're growing. But in the end, we don't sell anything, and we're not even from Mexico. <laughs> So what the hell are you then? What are you doing? And that's what I'm here to talk about, huh? Why, man? What, what, why? Right? And so, so, guys, we're not much different than many organizations, and many marketing organizations, at least. Right? It's really important to us to make sure that we don't become a commodity. As a category, and Mexico is 85 to 90% of the U.S. market. So as we speak for ourselves, we're effectively speaking for the uh, categories. It's really important to us that we grow demand, but we do so in a way that builds and protects value, means something to people beyond a functional need. Because at that point, you know, as we continue to get more importers, like Columbia, Pence, uh, Vice, Vice President Pence signed an agreement with Columbia, in order to allow them to start importing avocados into the United States for the first time this year. You know, it's macroeconomics, right? If, if you're making a lot of money and there's a high demand, you're going to get more competition, right? So as that competition continues to increase for us and that supply increases, we want to protect the value of the, the, the product. And we just believe that the best way to do that is by branding it. So in doing so, we have seen some pretty decent results, okay? Um, even Ad Week is calling us out here on the Super Bowl side. So the question is, all right, well, how are you doing it? Given all of that, you know, regulation situation, you've got, you know, the fact that it's a brandless space, the fact that you didn't exist, the fact that our name, when I started the first day, no, I think it was on my interview, I can't remember, but whichever, whichever one, I say, can we get rid of that from? Can we do something else? Instead of being a brand name of avocados from Mexico? Because what are you going to think? You're talking about origin, especially for a brand that doesn't exist. So they told me no, by the way, <laughs> which is why it's still there. But I mean, it's those types of questions. Again, when you're starting something from the ground up, very basic question, right? Something you don't have to ask when you go run Tide something that's been around forever. But those are the types of things that we try to, try to deal with. So here's the how. Avocados from Mexico is more than a produce brand. We're cultivators of meaningful good times. That vacation you spent in Cabo with your best friends? Yep, we know the stories. The quality time around the dinner table with your family on Taco Tuesdays. The great guac you had at happy hour down at your favorite Mexican spot yesterday or that fun Cinco de Mayo party. Now that's a fiesta. This is Mexicanity, 
a celebration of vibrant and meaningful moments in your everyday life through a connection with Mexican culture. It is fun. It is colorful. It's about you and your friends and family sharing a magical moment around a delicious bowl of guac. That is the Mexicanity core value that we've ingrained into our DNA since day uno. Each moment we create packs a punch that is bright and colorful, vibrant, happy and positive, just like the spirit of our avocado's origin. So go ahead, find the good times and the little things. This one's on us. Avocados from Mexico, always fun, always in season. Avocados from Mexico. So, you know, what's the, the thing that's interesting is that everything you saw and everything you heard except for the logo and the logo name, obviously brand name, and that jingle, we had to create everything. Fonts, what's going to be our color palette, what's going to be our brand personality, what's going to be our brand essence, what are we going to try to stand for? All of that had to be created from scratch. So it's not one of these caretaker roles where you come in for a brand like an ivory soap that's been around since like 1866 or something. Like we had to really figure this out and all the while figure out how are we gonna do that in a space in which you know, people don't think about brands, right? And the way we did that was we said, okay, we wanna break the mold. So what does that mean? All right, that's one of those nice little phrases that you hear at a CMO Insights conference. What does that mean, right? Try to give you some meat. All right. I want you to remember, we're all friends. So do not pull out the knives on me, y'all. Don't throw knives at me. Guess what? We don't go after millennials. <laughs> we don't. You know, it was, it, from, from the days that I spent a few days, a couple of years, in the agency side, you got to see, I know we have some agency folks in here, you get to see the inside stuff of a lot of companies. You know, worked for several companies. And it was kind of blasphemy to say you think you should really target some other people other than millennials, right? I love my CEO because this guy likes to challenge things just like I do. It's like, well, really? Does that make sense? Now, to be clear, and I'm sorry, to be clear, what you're looking at here on the left is that's our, um, call it segment name for uh, the general market, and on the right, that's a segment name for Hispanic. What we do on the right here, far right, with the uh, app, with Chipotle app, is uh, we do uh, use food service, and I'll talk about this just a little bit, in a little bit, uh, to chase after the millennial crowd. But generally speaking, we don't focus on them. Why? This is claimed information, claimed avocado consumption on an index basis. And what you see is, well, millennials are pretty high. What we see is opportunity gaps especially when you move on to panel data. Okay, this is actually a, a panel provider that we found in the produce space. It's actually, they do much more than produce. They're trying to challenge IRI and Nielsen, uh, but IRI, IRI and Nielsen don't do the greatest job in produce. Um, but as you can see here, boomers and Gen Xers are actually our avocado shoppers. So if you go back and compare the opportunity gaps to who's actually shopping, that's why we're focused on them. And they got money, by the way. They're not the ones saying, I can't buy a house because of your avocado toast, <laughs> right? And in the food service space, again, what we do see, though, is the flip. On the, uh, the food service space is a popular space for millennials. And so we are leveraging that area uh, as a two-fold piece. It's a B2B play for us. I'll talk about it slightly at the end of this. And it's also a B2C play for millennials. So we talk about how we're trying to break the mold and do something different. At the end of the day, when you look at produce, what do you see when you see marketing from produce, right? You see this. You know, it's the loving hands and arms of the farmer. It's the volcanic soil. It's the green groves. Please come buy our product. Usually not very branded. In this case, Taylor Farms, all these guys are actually branded. This is what they try to do. Um, and our brothers over in California. And we have done some work like that. This, most of this is prior to our arrival. Um, we had about six months when the organization was created to when the current CEO and I and everyone was brought on. So you know, we can do that too. We could talk about this as well. You know, if you go down there and 
spend some time in the Huertos, and it's, it's, really, it's really pretty inspiring, actually, to see what's happening with the economy and how uh, this is giving people opportunities. So we can do it, but we don't. And Mexico selects the avocado. Thank you. Yeah. of all are the avocados from Mexico. So to everyone in here, and to me, given my background in the CPG space, you think, well, okay, so what? You know, the produce space, I can't overstate this, is still doing the same thing they've been doing for decades. It's this farm to market to table mentality. I don't need to really brand anything. I just need to grow a great product, make sure it looks great, have my product supply and operations good, get it to the store, stock it properly, make sure it's stocked well, and it'll sell itself. That's not what we're doing here, right? We're trying to create an emotional connection to consumers so that we can protect the value going forward. And what we said back in 14 was, well, how can we put ourselves on the map because we don't have the biggest budgets in the world. It gets split in so many different ways and media is pretty expensive. Well, we just said, you know what, we're gonna go for it. We're gonna swing for the Super Bowl and see what happens. So we kept swinging. <laughs> uh, we had a pretty good year the first year and we said, well, let's keep doing it. But what's interesting is that's a lot of my budget. That's a lot of money. And for anyone in here that's bought the Super Bowl or worked on a media team, et cetera, you know you gotta do this thing called a match. So you're nodding your head back there. Well, you have to buy the Super Bowl, and then they want you to effectively double that by buying other properties you know, on their networks. That's pretty much my whole budget. Well, why would we do this? Well, we're getting results. I can't do anything from a paid media standpoint to get 27 billion impressions, and that's just impressions. I mean, I'm not even talking about the other KPIs that really matter. You know, this is just an opportunity to see things, right? But there's, from a media buy standpoint, there's nothing else I can do. And we're getting really, really good results along the way on the digital side as well. So again, you're back to the 17 million. Super Bowl's expensive, right? But my question to you is, is it underpriced? Is it not expensive enough? We're in the attention game. You think about what we do whether it's audio, video, digital, or otherwise. Most of the time, we are trying to interrupt, or at the store, points of interruption for you Coca-Cola people, I remember that phrase. We're trying to interrupt you know, the consumer from doing what they wanna do, whether it's watch the show, drive from A to B, listen to this radio uh, or this musical uh, content, but the Super Bowl is the one place where it's not like that, right? And so if you're in the attention game and you got a product in which it's going to deliver exactly what you're looking for at mass scale like that, how much is that worth? Again, it's a supply and demand. Give me, give me something else that's like that. Just give me one, right? There isn't one. So for us, the thing that makes it worth it is the fact that it's just not about an ad. We don't, 
little secret, we don't really even care that much about the ad. The ad is really just kind of cost of entry so that we can run a campaign to get us at 27 billion impressions by way of PR, by way of digital, by way of the things that we're doing on the shopper trade side. You know, the ad, it's 100 million impressions or so for 30 seconds, effectively. Of course, you've got, you're going to put it on your YouTube, your own accounts, et cetera. But at the end of the day, the thing that's working hard for you is the campaign. And what we're working on, again, is building that value, building a story around it. And that whole idea is the notion of irreplaceability. That's what we're working on on the general market side. Okay, on the Hispanic side, it's a little different. It's not irreplaceability. It's irre it's, it's, or I'm sorry, it's irresistibility on the general market side. It's irreplaceability on the Hispanic side. And what we're effectively saying is, look, you know, it's, it's, it's just always worth it. It's worth it for you to make sure that you're, you know, nourishing yourself with a healthy product, with a brand that uh, is all about, you know, fun times and meaningful good times. And what we're doing is we're trying to propagate that message throughout all the work we're doing. So let me give you a few ads. Poise, welcome to the dog show where humans compete for the ultimate prize, avocados from Mexico. They're healthy, delicious on everything, and always in season. So much training to compete at this level, but it's well worth the effort. They're so cute. Looks like the dogs have settled in. They can almost sniff the bum of victory. That's a good sit, a shake, and a stay. Amazing food. I'm sure he's making someone very proud right now. We've got a runner. Oh, the guac got to her. That'll land you in the penalty cone. Oh, this is impressive. He appears to be rolling over his 401k. Let's go down to our sideline correspondent. Good point, Charles. Wait, it looks like we have a winner. Give that man some guacamole. Wow. Truly top of class. Top of class. Please stop copying. Me. Stop copying. Avocados from Mexico. Do you want it? We want it! Oh, 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 oh. Nice one, Janet. Are those avocados from Mexico? Oh, yeah. They have good fats, they're healthy, and they're always in season. People will do anything for them. You ready, Glenn? Yeah! Go! Eyes up, hips out, Glenn! Healthy and delicious. You bet. Avocados from Mexico. I'll see your bet, and I'll raise you my last avocados from Mexico. But they're healthy and delicious on everything and always in season. So what are they worth to you? I call. I call. Kid doesn't need to go to college. Five aces. Oh, come on, man. Fui. Avocados from Mexico. All right, so I'm running out of time, so I'll flow through just a few of these. We're you know, talking about short-term and long-term demand. We, we're doing a lot. Uh, we're doing quite a bit down at the trade level, the retail level uh, with CPG. We call Shopper. We do have a Shopper marketing uh, space. We have an accompanying place in the CPG uh, uh, department that in the CPG side, you would call essentially your AEs or category management. We have that as well. Um, but we, we have all of these programs that'll be uh, running throughout the year. We partner with other uh, players out there, Tostitos, uh, the gentleman that runs Tostitos. I was in his wedding, um, good friend of mine. Uh, we uh, partnered up with, uh, with them to do this for uh, Cinco. On the uh, food service side, we bring in chefs to our culinary center uh, with the intent of uh, getting them to think about how to uh, add from an innovation standpoint, add up fresh avocados to their uh, menus. And uh, also, again, uh, here we actually have a Made in Mexico tour. We take them down to Mexico, um, select individuals uh, so that they can experience all the things that I was actually talking about a little bit earlier. Uh, we have a college and universities tour. Uh, this goes back to the food service side, helping to drive a lot of our efforts with Millennial Gen Z, and to be clear, millennials are getting old. In fact, the upper end of millennials is actually in my target, so it's not exactly accurate to no longer to say that. Um, it was accurate, you know, back in 14, but I need to figure out like what that what that middle ground is. Actually, for you guys that are in Florida, in uh, Miami, this is in Miami. We just opened this this year. We had a grand opening uh, in the Miami Hard Rock Stadium, okay, uh, during the uh, New England Miami game. 
Uh, this is a concessions program that our food service team does. It's in different uh, arenas around the country, uh, whether that's the AT&T Center um, in Dallas, actually both of them, where the Cowboys and the Mavericks play, up in uh, Milwaukee, the Bucks, uh, the Yankee Stadium here uh, in Miami. So we'll be pretty active during the uh, Super Bowl. Finally, guys, what we try to do from an education and health and wellness standpoint, here's the issue. Education is the number one barrier. People are tired of buying this expensive avocado and it going bad, or not knowing how to buy it and it's ripe, or when it's ripe, it's too hard. So we're trying to fix that problem in the industry. And health and wellness beyond next to taste is the number one or number two reason why people buy the product. So we wanna propagate that some. So we created a strategy called Ready When You're Ready. Uh, it's a whole uh, uh, attempt to uh, try to educate uh, consumers through various uh, communications means. And uh, of course, on the health and wellness side, we're doing a lot. We, we really have pushed that over to the digital side as, as the uh, main driver there. Uh, we've partnered with MyFitnessPal. We've even created this. So you changed your lifestyle. Exactly. Lower carb, high fat way of eating that I started roughly six months ago. But the high fat content I get mostly from avocado. And it's perfect because I can have it all year round. There's this misconception that you need to stop eating fats to be healthier. Good fats is what really helps you. And the fact that you can be consistent with it really propels you through whatever you're doing. There's nothing you can actually do wrong with the avocado. It's so worth it. Avocados from Mexico. So guys, as I leave you, I want to say number one, thank you for listening. I hope this was um, informative, had a little fun. I haven't had a drink tonight, but I'm about to. Uh, especially if the Nats win. Um, as you can see, you know, uh, we've been fortunate to see some success, some before we've started, and then a lot after, uh, while keeping, uh, you know, prices in a place that are tolerable, at least, for consumers, and also tolerable for the system, importers and growers and so on. Uh, but again, I thank you, and I'll take questions right after this. We are avocados from Mexico. We are passionate brand builders, culinary experts, extraordinary storytellers, marketing disruptors, and overachievers with a creative mind, bold goals, and a restless drive. We work hard and have fun while staying unwaveringly passionate about accomplishing the seemingly impossible. We are strategic category catalysts, driven by making a difference for our industry, for our consumers, and for the thousands of growers, packers, and importers who trust us with the fruit of their labor. They are our motivation and our inspiration to pursue the kind of breakthrough innovation that pushes boundaries and breaks the produce mold. As responsible category leaders, we placed value over price in our consumer's mind because we firmly believe that there's nothing like an avocado. Our recipe, educate, educate, educate. Never settle, always be first, and think big. Ultimately, brands are the people who build them, and ours is as unique as each of us, and as diverse as our team, which is made up of the best people in the industry. That is why after each win, we proudly celebrate, improve, and repeat to continue changing the game forever. Within our colorful diversity, one thing stands out as a consistent reminder of who we are as a culture and as a brand, and that is the vibrant magic of Mexicanity at our core. Avocados from Mexico, always in season. Avocados from Mexico. Thanks for your time, guys.